Congressman, from what you're saying, it sounds like what you want of this legislation is this isn't the end all be all, but it's a good first step in addressing gun violence in our nation. Uh, Representative Strickland, as well as Senator Ed Markey, both have the same sentiment. And as we sit here right now, according to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been at least 162 mass shootings in this country in the year 2023. And since wow. they have come to the agreement that this, this legislation is not enough to immediately stop the mass shooting cycle. So what do you think is? Well, I do think, uh, I do think I've supported and, uh, I've supported and voted for an assault weapons ban. Um, I think having uh, universal background checks, I think having, uh, I think closing all loopholes in terms of uh, who gets sold weaponry. I mean, loopholes meaning uh, any kind of um, loophole in the law, which allows people to buy weapons outside of uh, a background check. Anyone who buys a weapon should have a background check. Uh, and that background check needs to be given enough time for authorities uh, to be able to look through the databases uh, to find out if anybody has anything in their history. Uh, their, if they have a criminal history, they have a history of uh, spousal abuse, um, any kind of violence that is an indication that that person has an issue with uh you know uh control over their emotions and we should be very very wary about someone owning a weapon uh with an anger issue or with some sort of emotional explosive uh, explosiveness um that's why we need to be researching um carefully anybody who buys a weapon they should have to go through a background check and there shouldn't be any um, uh, any ways around uh, that check. Um, my recollection is that uh, most of the gun safety advocates believe that universal background checks with no loopholes could be the most effective thing uh, that we do. Uh, you know, short of limiting weapons in a more, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, more restrictive manner. Um, but we do have a Second Amendment. We have to sort of balance what that means. Um, so I think, and most Americans, overwhelming numbers of Americans support universal background checks. Do we need to make sure that the databases are fair? That the that now that the that uh, that there's ways to appeal. That that's all part of what we got to do to make sure that uh, uh, people are being treated fairly. But you know we have to open our eyes and recognize uh, the fact of the mass shootings you just mentioned. They, they are occurring uh, and there's hardly any place to hold, uh, any place to hide, there's no place to hide. And this this retreating uh, by the other side behind this idea that oh, we, we're gonna solve this by hardening schools or in other words, having an arms race promoting an arms race uh, between teachers and would-be uh, mass murderers, um, this, is, this is not the way forward. Congressman, something you did say is we do have a Second Amendment. And when some Americans hear phrases like limiting weapons and an assault weapons ban, they immediately think that's an infringement on my Second Amendment right. What's your response to that? Well, my response to that is that uh, when when Justice Scalia uh, wrote the uh, Supreme Court opinion, which found, this was before he died, and this is in the aughts, I can't remember the exact year, but the, the Scalia opinion uh, found that individuals had a right, had a right to protect their hearth and home. Um, that was not an opinion which uh, said that uh, you can carry your weapons anywhere you want um, and you had a right to defend yourself outside your heart and hearth and home. Um, and Scalia left open the possibility that uh, assault weapons could be um, regulated. Uh, he did not 
he did not uh, find he did not establish in that opinion and uh, nor has the Supreme Court since then uh, said that the government can't regulate um, assault weapons so uh, it's an, it's in another world right now some states have moved ahead with making uh, the way in which you can carry the weapons around uh, you know more and more liberalized um, they've instituted uh, stand and defend laws, which if, if you perceive yourself to be in danger, uh, that gives you uh, the right to use your weapon uh, and diminish the level of liability you might have to suffer criminally or, or otherwise civilly. Um, I think these are very dangerous laws. Uh, they kind of rely on high, highly subjective kind of judgments about uh, uh, about when you're in danger, and uh, it, it 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 imposes a it, it kind of creates a kind of vigilante mindset uh, that people uh, can take the law into their own hands. They can take another person's life if they feel in danger. I mention all this because uh, you know a, a stand and and uh, uh, defend yourself kind of law is far different than what Justice Scalia wrote about in terms of uh, you have a right to own a weapon to defend home and hearth. Um, and uh, I I disagree with the Scalia opinion as well. Um, I don't think it, uh, it was necessarily the case. Uh, it is necessarily the case that the founders uh, believed in an individual uh, an individual's right to own an assault weapon. A little less clear when it comes to sort of, say, uh, the rifle uh, that uh, was common during colonial days uh, or, or in the early parts of the Republic. Uh, but, you know, assault rifles didn't exist uh, at the founding of our nation. Uh, they didn't. And so Scalia, you know, being an original constructionist, an original an originalist about the Constitution, um, you know, I think he was wrestling with that. Congressman, before I let you go, I do want to ask you, what's next for the Gun Violence Prevention Research Act? Well, what's next is uh, to, I think, get more co-sponsors of the bill, uh, to build uh, uh, public support. Um, I think most members of the public uh, like the 80% of Americans who believe uh, in universal background checks would say, this is a very common sense thing. Why isn't Congress doing it? And I think uh, we, uh, we together need to make um, research, expanding research at the CDC as to the origins of gun violence in our country, an issue uh, that is too hot to ignore. Uh, not just only too hot to touch, but too hot to ignore. Uh, and that is what moves contentious pieces of legislation through, is when the American people make it very clear to the representatives that we expect you to do this. Um, we have to focus enough attention on it uh, to, to just say, to, to make it clear that this is too hot an issue to ignore.